Skagos, a mysterious and desolate island to the northeast of Westeros, seems to be growing more and more important as A Song of Ice and Fire progresses. Specifically, in A Dance with Dragons, Sir Davos Seaworth is dispatched to Skagos by Lord Wyman Manderley. Under orders to return Rickon Stark, the long-lost Lord of Winterfell, to his rightful seat. So what do we know so far about Skagos, and how might its history and folklore influence the future of the series in The Winds of Winter? First mentioned in The Clash of Kings, Skagos is a bleak and desolate island composed almost entirely from rock and stone jutting up out of the ocean. In fact, Skagos means stone in the Old Tongue, an ancient language used by the First Men of the North. The First Men were repelled from most of Westeros when the Andals invaded. However, they remained pretty well in the North, especially, it seems, in Skagos, as a lot of their traditions seem to be derived directly from the First Men. Though it's often forgotten, one point of view character has already been within sight of Skagos. During Sam's long voyage from Eastwatch by the Sea to Old Town, one of the first sights visible from the ship is the stony mountain peaks of Skagos. He reflects on some of the Isle's history before discussing it with a few of his companions. Ultimately, Sam is quite happy to have not landed on Skagos, as he is quite fearful of it, as he is many things. The reader gains a fair deal of knowledge about the Skagosi and their history through both Sam's musings and the world of ice and fire. Residents of Skagos are often described as a massive and fairly hairy, with some Northmen speculating that they may have giant's blood. We know from John's adventures beyond the wall that giants are still alive and well. We meet one one in both the show and the book, and he's very fun to be around. So this is not out of the realm of possibility as a potential for the descent of the Skagosi. Other rumors about these people have a notably darker tone. They're described by many as cannibals and fearsome warriors, often depicted on the back of unicorns. What's more, it's said they offer human sacrifices to weirwood trees on their island. However, these depictions could be shaded by recent history. The following passage is from Samuel II, A Feast for Crows. Quote, Only a hundred years ago, Skagos had risen in rebellion. Their revolt had taken years to quell and claimed the life of the Lord of Winterfell and hundreds of his sworn swords. Some songs said the Skags were cannibals. Supposedly their warriors ate the hearts and livers of the men they slew. In the ancient days, the Skagosi had sailed to the nearby Isle of Skane, seized its women, slaughtered its men, and ate them on a pebbled beach in a feast that lasted for a fortnight. Skane remained unpeopled to this day. While this passage reveals some darker elements of the Skagosi history, it's worth noting that those in the north are quite likely biased against the Skagosi in some regard, as they did just recently rise in rebellion and cost many, many lives in putting that rebellion down. We see images of this bias that warfare creates throughout the War of the Five Kings, with images of Rob and Joffrey from different sides being similarly monstrous, while we know only one of them is particularly monstrous. Um... The image of these people depicted in the world of Ice and Fire is generally more balanced and mentions that while they did practice cannibalism in the past, that practice may not have continued into the modern day. They don't really know because they haven't been there in a very long time. However, we soon will be when the Winds of Winter is released through Davos' perspective. The Maesters of the Citadel also offer further insight into the supposed unicorns that dwell on Skagos. These are not the modern idea of a majestic unicorn as depicted in the sigil of House Bax, which is in A Song of Ice and Fire, though it's a very minor house, but rather described as hairy, hulking beasts with a singular tusk extending from their foreheads. They seem to be at least somewhat related to goats, as they're known to climb mountains rather easily. This is quite important on Skagos, which is a very mountainous island. They're very important for transportation. Maesters of the Citadel have long sought out living specimens in order to uh, essentially uh, observe, or a skeleton for research, but both have eluded their grasp, at least in recent history. The role of Skagos in A Dance with Dragons is also rather telling regarding its relationship with the rest of the North. In A Clash of Kings, Bran and Rickon Stark split up. Bran is taken beyond the wall by Hodor, Mira Reed, and Jojen Reed, while Asha takes Rickon to Skagos. Given that Asha is a wildling, this might indicate that Skagos has a closer relationship with the wildlings than it does with those south of the wall. What's more, we see that Davos is sent by Wyman Manderley to retrieve him rather than any Northman. Davos is someone who is likely to be viewed as expendable to Wyman Manderley and to those in the north, as Wyman's goals seem to pretty much be the restoration of the north and very little else, other than overthrowing its current overlords in the Boltons and the Freys. This relationship brings with it a problem that might manifest in the Winds of Winter, that being Rickon's status as the rightful heir to Winterfell. 
Rickon and Osha haven't been seen since book two. However, it does seem reasonable that Osha would have hidden Rickon's identity once they arrived on Skagos, if not before. Rickon already is a bit of a wild child, so it does seem plausible that Osha could pass him off as a wildling boy. What's more, his direwolf Shaggy Dog could help lend to this image. Direwolves tend to only live north of the Wall, which would line up with Asha's story about Rickon's true identity. The Skagosi, as noted before, have quite a tumultuous relationship with the Starks, which could put Rickon in quite a bit of danger if his true history and lineage were to be discovered by the Skagosi. This brings us to Davos's arrival on Skagos. We will likely see this fairly early in the Winds of Winter, but it hasn't been previewed at all, which is quite interesting. We've had a preview chapter that does very much go over the Sanus camp, that being the Theon chapter in the Winds of Winter that was released, I believe, back in 2014 or 15. I was not part of the fan base at that point, so I'm not entirely sure on the exact year there. But Davos, we haven't heard from since the Dance with Dragons in 2011. This could be for a number of reasons, but it does seem more likely than not that some major events will take place on Skagos once he arrives. Davos's journey to Skagos could be quite dangerous for Rickon, especially if the Skagosi discover who he truly is. Davos is not a northerner and does not have many ideas about their customs, culture, or history, as we have heard several times throughout his point of views in A Dance with Dragons. This lack of knowledge could lead to him assuming that the Skagosi are just other northern houses. They could be people who could be swayed to Sanus' side and could be swayed to supporting the rightful Lord of Winterfell, Rickon Stark, which would, in turn, put Rickon Stark in some danger, as he is the heir to Winterfell and thus the same house that put down their rebellion about a century ago, if their history goes back uh, to similar lengths. It could very well be something that holds a grudge. Maybe they think that Northerners and Mainlanders are people who are savages, unlike them, who are not. Being put in danger by, or even being killed by, the Skagosi could very much line up with Rickon's arc as a whole, as well as with Davos's. Rickon has a direwolf, as mentioned earlier in this video, and that direwolf's name is Shaggy Dog. A Shaggy Dog is a story that is long and winding, but ends up ultimately having no true point to it. To have Rickon turn out to be alive after all this time and almost be discovered by Davos and brought back to his rightful seat in the north, only to be killed by the people who have housed him for the past two years, would very much be a shaggy dog, both for Davos' story and for Rickon's. What's more, Davos is someone who tends to get out of situations that it really seems like he shouldn't get out of, uh, most uh, notably the Battle of the Blackwater and the events at Wyman Manderley's in A Dance with Dragons, both of which times he is assumed to be dead. Uh, so getting out of Skagos could very much be a hat trick in that regard as well. However, it does seem uh, fairly likely that he will survive and end up playing some role in the uh, Winds of Winter further, because Davos is a very important character who is pretty central to a lot of the goings-on in the Stannis camp and potentially in the North. There are a couple more miscellaneous theories that are worth mentioning when discussing Skagos. First and foremost, that the dragon, the cannibal, resided here or resides here at some point. It's quite unlikely that the cannibal would still be alive, as it was very old during the Dance of the Dragons, and would be the oldest dragon that ever lived if it were still alive now. But the theory goes that we do not see the cannibal after the funeral of a certain character that I'm not going to spoil for the sake of House of the Dragon viewers. Uh, and I think that uh, people tend to believe that, oh, maybe this dragon flew up to Skagos afterwards, continued along the uh, eastern coast of Westeros until it arrived there, and perhaps was worshipped by the Skagosi. Perhaps northerners saw it, and that's where the rumors of cannibalism tended to come from. However, there's no hard evidence to support this by any means, and I don't particularly believe that it's true. However, the cannibalism does tie into another potential uh, theory as to the Skagosi, that being that their cannibalism is a practice uh, that is intended to awaken psychic gifts. We've seen this as a practice in the series multiple times, particularly in the story of Bran and with the theory of Jojen Pace, which is one of my personal favorite theories. And this could have kind of lent itself to awakening uh, Rickon's psychic abilities. Uh, it's also good to note that in G. Steph's Riot posts that I made a video about uh, earlier this week, he mentions that in an earlier draft of a John chapter, uh, Rickon is seen sharing a kill with his direwolf Shaggy Dog, being called his direwolf's other half, which is quite interesting, and could indicate that Rickon's psychic abilities in connection to his direwolf could be developing through his time on this island, and perhaps through their practices in relation to the First Men and the magic of the Weirwoods and Old Gods.
To wrap up, there's another bit of symbolism and shared practice that is interesting to point out. Most notably, it comes from the last paragraph of the last brand chapter in A Dance with Dragons. This doesn't have anything to do with Rickon, but it is an interesting parallel between practices of the First Man and of the Skagosi. In the final paragraph of Bran's final chapter in A Dance with Dragons, we see a woman sacrificing a man before Weirwood with a bronze sickle. This is more likely than not the first men performing some sort of sacrifice to a Weirwood. And we hear about exactly that practice still going on on Skagos, which is quite interesting. It very much seems like a kind of window into the uh, first men culture that has very much died out in a lot of Westeros. I think that Rickon, should he live, having been raised by that, might be more in touch with his Stark roots than some of his siblings would be, as he has been around these first men for a very long time, well, like Sansa has been in the south and Arya has been off in Braavos. So, this has been the video on Skagos. What do you think? How do you think Rickon's story is going to turn out? How do you think Davos' story is going to turn out? Are you excited to see unicorns? I know I am. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps me grow the channel, and I always really appreciate it. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys want me to do next, so be sure to leave a comment if there's anything you would want to see me do. And yeah, I uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I will see you all soon. See ya.